Good. So I will start from very basics. So in case uh, if you guys have know about little bit about uh, Java or any programming language, so you might feel that actually what I'm going to take very silly concepts. So but a little bit actually what these things, if you know, will be more comfortable when you're going for Selenium over there. Okay, learning information. That's why I take. So uh, be with me uh, within actually what two sessions or something. I'll come to the proper flow. Okay. The first uh, two days alone, I'll be going very basics. So in case if I'm going very slow also, let me know so that according to that, I can cope up my speed also. Can we get a soft copy of all these things? Yes, yes. Every day I'll send you the session. Talk. So it's like I'll be sending a mail to you every day like this. Okay. It's like, for example, I'll send you the information. So for that day, what are the topics we have covered? Okay. And okay. then I upload the video over there in YouTube. Now. So that okay. YouTube URL, then after that, the code information, then if I'm going to give some assignments, then uh, that's, okay, the YouTube URL, this is what I'll be sending you. You'll get every day in a perfect, uh, perfect level. You will get a lot of worries. Okay. Yes. So now, First, before going to Java, we are going to learn how normally a program is going to execute. That's what first we are going to see. Then after that, we'll see how a Java program is going to execute. Now, okay. usually, uh, so just a second, guys. So how a normally program executes means I will write a program in a notepad or a specific tool will be there. There I used to write the program. So always the program, what we write, we'll be calling it as a high level language. Why it's called as a high level language means it's a human understandable language over there. Whatever you write, that can be understandable by a human is called as a human high level language, but that cannot be understood by a system. Systems can understand only zeros and ones alone. So what we need to do, we need to convert that high level language to a machine understandable language. That is of zeros and ones. For that, we need a translator. There are two types of translator that are available in the market. One is compiler, another one is interpreter. What this compiler and interpreter will do means it will convert the high level language into a machine level language that is zeros and ones it will convert. Then that will be given to the CPU or the server for execution. This is what a normally an execution process will happen. Now, if you take compiler, okay, both compiler interpreter is going to translate it. But what is the difference between both things? I have a notepad, okay. So in that I have written my program. So totally thousand lines of code is there in the program. If I'm going to convert the entire thousand lines of code in a single shot. Okay. I'm going to convert the entire thousand lines of code into a machine level language. Okay. That is into zeros and ones that is called as compiler. It translates the entire set of program into machine level language given for execution. If I take interpreter each and every line by line, it will be convert. Then what it will be given for execution. Okay, so thousand lines of code is there means first line will be converted, then it will be given for execution. Second line will be converted, then it will be given for execution. Third line, fourth line, like that. Each and every line by line, the information will be given, then only it will be given for execution for us. Okay, that's what interpreter will do. Clear? So now we'll see how a Java program will execute. Okay, usually in olden days, the programming language, if you take uh, basic COBOL, Fortran, everything as only one type of translation alone. So now in Java, what they have done means they have integrated both compiler and then interpreter. Okay. From their side, they have, they have both compiler plus interpreter. Two types of conversion is going to happen here. Okay. How this is going to do? I will write my programs. Okay. Each and every line will be called as a statement. 
in java it's called as java statements if it is ruby it's called as ruby statements over there okay so i write my code then i will save the code with an extension called dot java okay so if it is ruby dot rb every programming language when it's going to save the file that need to be saved with an extension when we save with that extension then only it will come to know this is a type of that programming language that's it okay now we have saved the file now what we java will do means okay first it will compile the program that is java compiler what it will do means it will convert all the thousand lines of code into a byte code okay so entire program will be converted then after that it's going to create me a dot class file okay that's what first it will be done it conversion will happen then dot class file will be created that is it will be zeros and ones but this zeros and ones cannot be understandable by cpu or the server directly it needs jvm okay that is java virtual machine so java virtual machine is the one which can understandable this zeros and ones okay so this is a class file okay so the zeros and ones will be given okay this is class file will be given to the jvm then another type of conversion okay so that is actually what this will convert that byte code again into one more level of machine level language sorry again will be zeros and ones only but this will be understandable by actually what cpu here if you see interpreter level conversion will happen what is the difference between this compiler and interpreter in the java what is going to do the difference over there means compiler will identify any syntactical errors if it is present or not in the system sorry in the uh, file it will identify all the syntactical errors then after that interpreter what it will do means it will help me for to identify the functionality level errors okay functionality level errors is going to do over there that's what is going to be. clear clear for everyone okay compiler syntactical errors it will identify interpreter what it's going to do means it's going to do for my side if i have a lot of um, uh, lines line by line it will execute okay it will be converting it then execution level convert execution any functionality level errors are there that alone will be found for example if i'm going to give integer i is equal to 10 divided by 0 so what are the things happening here means i'm trying to divide a number by 0 that will give me infinity so there is no data type in java for me to store the infinity in java okay infinity in java so that's why it will throw me a functionality error when it's going to execute that process then when it will know the next word it's going to give me an error in the program that's what will be identified by the interpreter okay then if there is no error in the program execution will happen successfully so compiler level we have some advantages interpreter level we have some advantages so what are the differences if you see compiler all the thousand lines of code will be converted then only it be executed if i am going to sorry guys if i'm going to convert thousand lines of code what will happen it will going to take some fraction of seconds for me after the conversion only execution will happen correct same thing interpreter level what will happen when i'm going to execute it line by line conversion will happen so the startup time for execution will be very fast in the interpreter level but the problem is what means if i'm going to find an error in the 500 okay the line number 500 then it will execute first this 500 lines of code then won't it will throw me the error then next to what will happen i will clear the error then again i'll run then again in the 600th line one more time error clear it then again run 700th line then again 800 line like that if it's going to stop each and every time that is going to be a big problem okay so that's a problem with the interpreter but compiler what it will do means from my side at the beginning stage itself it's going to identify how many errors are there 
okay that is syntactical errors it's going to identify for me then after that only execution will happen so any errors in the program it will be identified before the execution time okay then only execution will be started that's the advantage of compiler okay interpreted level the startup time is faster but any errors are there that time it will be very slow for me okay that's it so now if you see jvm is needed for java to run the class file i told because the class file cannot be understood by cpu directly for that we need this jvm correct so from my side so i am need to install the jvm if i want to run the java file so to install jvm we need jre okay jre is what means is java runtime environment jre is java runtime environment okay so what is this runtime every programming language has its own runtime environment for us okay so why we will have that runtime environment means your programming language can run only in that environment alone okay it's like creating a path in the server so execution will happen in that place only that's what this is going to be done over here okay so jre also what will happen means it will create a java runtime environment so if that is installed that time jvm also is being installed indirectly at the back end then next we have jdk what is this jdk means is called as java development kit what this java development kit will do means it will consist of the java compiler plus jvm plus jre that is jvm plus jre will be there along with that java compiler also will be there so what this will jdk will do means at the beginning stage itself from my side i will compile the program then after that only it will be given for execution correct so this compiler information will be there separately along with that some other stuffs also so mainly actually what your jdk when it's needed means okay when we come to selenium and then when we are running the advanced level features framework or and maven like those steps we need this jdk okay java development kit the entire set that we will be using it over here that's the main thing okay so anyone has any doubts on understanding the basics so how a program will execute java program and what other things are needed anyone has any doubts please let me know okay so now now from my side uh, yeah yeah yes yeah, um basically for which kind of applications we use this java uh so it's like we will not say that actually what application based this java and all those things so it's like from my side programming language are there like uh, we have lot of programming languages correct so yeah i have a knowledge on java or ruby okay because i have studied only java and ruby so that time we usually go with java or ruby okay that is what then another thing if it is a small based application okay it's a very small applications or something that time we will go with python perl or php like that okay if it's a big application it's better to go with actually what some good languages like actually what java or ruby or something like uh, what say you were um, right now the ruby also is famous like those things you can go for it that's okay okay so c c++ basic cobol fortran all those things are actually what very old languages which currently we don't use for the new applications so mainly everyone tries to go with java why java means actually what java is vast so any uh, that is if you are developing an application with dotnet or java also, uh, sorry ruby also what will happen means you need help of the java or the javascript at any point of time okay that's how it will be that from my side selenium also is like that only so if you currently see in my company i am using selenium with ruby why i am using with selenium with ruby is actually because the person who has started it that guy he knows only ruby so that's why he started with selenium ruby and then we are following it in my old company we started with java because i know java so that's why i constructed the framework and then after that we did so that's how the frameworks and all those things have been uh, so it's been uh, 
uh, what, what we say is selected which one to proceed clear Paraji? yeah thank you yeah cool so now if you see we have this class file here so what is this class file over there means okay so java file is used to write the program class files are used for execution clear okay? java files are used for writing the program class files are used for execution so this is the biggest advantage that java provides here so what is this advantage for example i am going to develop the software okay for example flipkart or mintra is that type of software is what i have developed now i want to sell this product to different places so a client comes over there and then he's asking i want to see your application before what we used to do is we have to send the entire code to the client then the client with that code only he can just check whether the application whether he, uh, he will execute it and then after that he will see whether he likes the application or not that's how it was there before once java came it becomes a difference okay it came with a difference here so what is the thing is they came with the dot class file concept that means that class file can be read only by jvm method no one can read it what they will do is they write the program in the dot java file then finally they compress it and then they create it as a dot class file okay so after compilation everything will become as a class file then only my execution starts okay so they send only the class file to them now what will happen advantage for me is what means my code will be secure no one can see my code for execution level if they have the class file they can execute the code that is what we are doing over there in the help of class file okay so class files are it's like actually only used for execution only jvm can execute it others cannot execute that so anyone has any doubts on this the usage of class file okay so cool so now what i will do we have seen about the execution now we'll see about how to install java today i'm going to tell you only about the installation part from tomorrow onwards we'll start with the data types and all the steps so first we have to see how to install java if you want to install java you type cmd then here i type java space iphone version this will say that actually what you have any version in java of java installed in the system if you don't uh java installed system you'll be getting java is not recognized as internal or external command that means we don't have java installed in the system so now we have to install java means what do you need to do so simple you just google here java download so here if you see i'll go to the first one here when you click free java download then here when i give agree and start free download so now what will happen for me when exe file will be created and then that will be saved that's what we'll do. Okay, an exe file alone will be created, will be downloaded. Then after that, I need to save that. So then after that, we have to install that one. Double click on the .exe file. Then next to what you need to do, click on next, 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 and finally finish. That means your Java is installed. That's the process. If you want to install JDK, for that you have to give JDK download. So we have seen. So I given this JDK information over there. Okay. So from my side, I've installed the Java. Then to confirm whether it's properly installed, so for that I'll give Java space iPhone version. That will give me the version properly over there. Then if you come down, I will install this. Then after that. We check over here. So we installed it. Then after that, from my side, I need to first check whether mine is 
right click please so advanced system spins uh, sorry uh, if you see over here 64 bit operating machine over there which is a 4 gb ram okay so based on that one i will select the information so basically agree and start free download Sorry, this one, the same thing is what actually what I will give you over here. So in case if you're going to click on the first one. Okay, so the JDK download is what right now we are going to do. So download Windows X64 and then X86 over there. So right now minus what means it is 64 bit. So that means it's represented with this one. Okay, so now my JDK so we have installed the java now if you want to install the jdk so I'll click on this url so now we have installed to jdk so for that you can just take this url otherwise you can just give jdk download so you will come to this section jdk download Go to the first URL, you can see the Java platform over here. Okay, click on this. Okay. So now if you come down, you can see the development kit A2 double one two. So here x86 that is for 32 bit. 64 bit is will be Windows X64 over here. So I'll click on it, same thing, double click, next, 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 and then installation will be completed for me. So that's what will happen over here. Same thing with screenshots I given over there. So I need to click on this one. I need to click on this one. Then after that only I can download this information. So I given that. Then finally, once you install it, you can see if you go to the C drive, Here. So in case you can see Java in C drive program file is Java in that right now if you have installed over there by 10 3 p.m. by 10 okay so JDK and then JRE when you install Java over there only JRE will come when you install JDK, you will get both JDK and then JRE over there. Okay, that's the thing. So now, what you have to do, you come inside this one, go to the JDK bin folder, copy the location. Okay, so now, so now what I will do, I install this one. Then now I'll go to the my computer properties, go to the advanced system settings, then advanced tab, then click on environment variables. Then here you search for path. Okay. Then you have to double click on that or you can click on edit. Then you will come to the end. Then give a semicolon and finally paste the path of the JDK bin folder. Okay, that is what important over there. The bin folder path is what we have to set over there. So we set it. I already clicked on OK. So I click on cancel. So we have done the JDK setup. Okay, so if you come advanced app environment variables, here the path variable will be there. Okay, then we have this system variable that is actually what the, we have changed the path information over there now. So the bin folder path over there, that information here. Then after that, we have the, if you calm down, then after that we can just give Java space iPhone version. Make sure you close this command prompt and then open the new command prompt. Okay, so we have got this version also. So that means for us, 
Java is installed successfully and then JDK also is installed successfully. Okay, so I'll just give a small recap as what we have done. If you want to install Java, just give Java download, then go to the first URL, click on free Java download, then again start free download, and the exe file will come. Next, 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 installation has been completed. Then next. So next is JDK download. So if you want JDK download for the JDK download. So we gave, so go to the first URL. Then you can see this JDK AW1. So click on that. So we got this. Then after that, if you see x86 84. So from my side, what is there? That is a 64 bit machine. How you will compare over that means if you go to the C drive. Okay. Here go to program files, Java. Inside that one, you can see this JDK. Go to the JDK folder, go to the bin folder, then copy the location of that. Right click, copy. Then after that, you have to come to the Right click, properties, advanced system settings, advanced tab, environment variables, then go to the path, edit it, then give the information, then after that, click on OK and OK, I already have, so I'm cancelling it. So this is what about from my side installing the JDK setup over there. Okay, that's it. So now we'll see how to install Eclipse. So if you want to install Eclipse, that is so simple. Uh, download Eclipse, Eclipse download, I'll just give. Then if I come to the first URL, I can see my Eclipse information, all those things. Right now, Neon is the latest one. If I want to go to some other Different thing means just give here Eclipse Neon download. Simply I'll just give. Then go to the free downloads. Here you can see Eclipse ID for Java developers and all those things. So if I, I want to go to the previous one, okay. So now if I want the previous download something, so I can just give Eclipse Kepler download. Okay, Eclipse Kepler download I gave over here. So based on that, that will go. So we'll click on the first URL, the second URL. So now I want my clip or which one I want. So if I want the Kepler over there, so Eclipse ID for Java developers. So that is what we have to take. Any information, if you want to work on with Selenium, we need to take that. Then here, if you see, minus Windows 64 bit. So choose your version according to the you can select 64. Then after that, you can download that. Okay, that's it. Cliff, everyone, anyone has any doubts? Okay, so once you download it, you can see here under the C drive, I'll go to the program files, then you can see Java. Sorry, I'm, I'm not stored here. So in case if I'm stored it over there, I'll be getting a rar file like this. When I right click, extract here, that time I'll be getting a folder like this. This will be called as a work location over here. Okay, in that you can see an icon like this. If you double click on this icon, it'll open me a new window. That's the only thing. So there is no installation over here. The only thing is that you we have to run. Okay. So the only thing is we have to download and then we have to use it over here. So here I'll select here my location. 
so usually it will be in C drive. If you want, you can change it over there in a different location because C drive anytime they might clear it. So from my side, I got this workspace launcher over there. So when you double click on it, we got then I'll select browse and then I'll select one location where I need to save my files. Then I'll click on OK. When I click on OK, that will open me the Eclipse window over here. So usually by default, you'll be like you'll be getting a a welcome screen. Right now, I don't want that welcome screen over there. So if you want that Eclipse directly also you can go. For me, right now I'm opening an existing environment. You can choose your environment. So I got this. So this is what the Eclipse over here. Clear? Anyone has any doubts on this? So what are the things we are seeing? Is simple. We have seen how to download Java, how to download and install. Uh, what is it? Sorry. How to install Java, how to install JDK, and then finally how to download and then use Eclipse over there. That's what we are seeing for today's session. And then how to. Have... Yeah, yeah. Yes, Bhargavi. Uh, why can't we use any other IDs like Webs Terminal? Why should we use only Eclipse for Java? Uh, no, no, it's not like that. You can use, there are multiple tools available for you. Eclipse, NetBeans are the most famous one right now. Okay, and then we also have Supply and we have, okay. So those are all a little bit famous thing. And then Intel J also is famous. So what is that finally, if you see this Eclipse, Net, uh, NetBeans, Intel J, and then oh, you are saying something like that. All those things are UI representation tool only. Whatever you do, it's going to happen in the back end only. This is tipping for you. See, right now, for me, in a colored way, it gives me these things are keywords for me. Okay, when I write it in a notepad, normal text notepad, there you cannot see these things. Everything will look alike. Okay. That's the advantage. And now also, I can execute the program directly from this Eclipse tool itself. Same thing when I run it, uh, I write it through command from a different file, and then when I execute it, separately, we need to. Do it. Okay. Thank you. That's the okay. So, any doubts for anyone, please, for today's session? Today, just installation part. part. I didn't. Know. I don't want to cover anything. From tomorrow only, actually, what we'll go with variables, data types, and then functions. Okay. okay. I'll also forward you these two documents for you. So, one is for Java execution. Another one is for Eclipse execution and installation of it. Okay. I'll forward these two, two documents. Then you can start, uh, you can first install for today. Then from tomorrow, we'll start with the ex uh, executions of programs. Okay. Thank you. Thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Thank you. Bye-bye. See you. I'll also send you the recordings to you. Just uh, in case you have any uh, doubts or something, you can go through that. Yeah, sure. And one more thing, uh, we need yeah. that manual testing uh, videos, video uh, links. Oh, sure, sure. I'll send you that one for today. Okay, most probably I'll try for to, uh, today or tomorrow for sure. Okay, thank you. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Bye-bye. See you. Bye.